sectional charges here. Plus two thirds for one up cork, plus two thirds for the other bottom up cork, the down cork, minus one third. If we add these fractional electric charges, two thirds, two thirds, so positive four thirds. If you minus one third, you end up with a positive one. That's the electromagnetic charge on a proton. This is the hydrogen nucleus. There's so many different names for this. Everybody gets confused from fourth graders to fourth year chemistry students. I'm filling in the blanks. This is what's not taught. The sun can make helium. Well, how does it do it? Ask a physicist. They don't, won't be able to explain it this simple. Two up quarks and a down quark. Hydrogen protons from the gravity of the sun as they're fused together, the sun will make antimatter in the first reaction in the core. At 15 million degrees, you're able to get two protons coming together and the result, the energy from the up becomes a down. Now you have two down quarks and an up quark. This is the neutron. This is what the sun is making. Before it can make helium, before any stars can make other heavier elements, you need neutrons. Neutrons are more massive. We'll draw it bigger here, okay? What holds these quarks together are called gluons. Each quark gets a gluon. There's three for that, three for that. So here's one, two. Three, four, five, six. Let's make a cartoon character out of this. Put some eyeballs in there. This is called the neutron bunny. Third graders have been drawing this for 10 years now. Helium has two protons, two neutrons. It can have one neutron too, but 99% of the time, what's called an alpha particle, is two protons, two neutrons. The sun has to make a neutron first. So what the sun is doing is it's making neutrons. Have you ever heard that? Ask astronomers, ask physicists. They won't tell you that it's making neutrons. Okay, this is the big crux of the problem with education nowadays. Chemists learn the periodic table. You cannot learn the periodic table without learning how the stars make elements. The chart of the nuclides will show the proton and neutron ratio. Elements are numbers of protons. You have to hear this a hundred times before it makes sense. So back in the history of the universe as the Big Bang expansion elements cooled you had all these hydrogen protons out here now gravity began fusing to make neutrons now I'll have to show you how that's done okay inside the Sun you've got the Sun burning bright the up quark from the proton to make more mass. This goes back to Einstein's equation that you all, everybody memorizes, but nobody knows what it's about. E equals mc squared. Okay, the energy, 15 million degrees. I'm right here. 15 million degree Kelvin, the core of the sun is able to fuse the protons to the point where the up quark receives enough energy to increase its mass. The up quark becoming a down quark
Draw it bigger. You will see these letters the same size in any chart in the world. Draw it bigger. The down is more massive than the up. The charge, electromagnetic charge on the up quark was plus two-thirds. The charge on a down quark, minus one-third. So, conservation of energy, conservation of matter, these go back to Newtonian physics. This is modern, high-energy <laughs> particle physics. Conservation rules still follow. Electromagnetic plus two-thirds to minus one-third, there has to be a positive charge loss somewhere. A positive one is carried away by what's called an anti-electron. This is antimatter in the sun. This is not science fiction. I go to conferences all over the country Graduate students, PhDs, think antimatter is something only on Star Trek. The sun creates antimatter. The first reaction that has happened. So, a positron, an electron with a positive charge, has to also be emitted. Now, this is antimatter to offset the matter that was created with the down quark. So we've got a conservation of matter, we've got a conservation of electromagnetic charge. If there's time, I'll explain to you. Electricity and magnetism are the same thing. They just happen to have these direction vectors that are perpendicular to each other. But for simplistic purposes, conservation of charge, electric magnetic charge, conservation of mass. There's one more quantum quantity called spin. We spin like this, but it's, it's an imaginary force that needs to be accounted for. This is where the particle, if you've heard of neutrinos, it's pretty much confirmed they have mass. These neutrinos are pretty fascinating things. They get the Greek letter mu, nu. And from matter, antimatter, because this is an anti-electron, this is actually a real neutrino. When radioactive decay happens, antineutrinos are emitted. The antineutrino was first discovered in South Carolina at the Savannah River nuclear power plant. Some guys, Frederick Raines, and got the Nobel Prize for this. But a neutrino is emitted in the sun. It's so tiny, the mass is so tiny, it there's supposedly, I've heard, as many as a trillion going through your eyeball right now from the sun. That's how dense they are. These are from the beginning reactions again. So the first reaction in the sun, if you can get this reaction, any element through plutonium up to the biggest now, which is probably verified anyway, 112 protons, 180 some neutrons all started at this phase in stars. The sun is doing this right now to make helium. We have to be older than the sun. There's elements, carbon, iron in your blood carrying your hemoglobin's oxygen and carbon dioxide around. That iron was created in stars before the earth could even be revolving around the sun because the sun is still making the first step of neutrons. I was going to have this drawn out for you, but I'll just draw it as you watch here. Proton, proton, neutron, neutron. This is what's known as the alpha particle. Greek letter alpha. Helium. This is what the sun's making. Now the sun at 15 million degrees is not enough in its evolution in the future, as they call it, will become more helium than there is hydrogen. Two heliums do not stick together. 